All right. So 1 Corinthians 10 uh, is going to kind of be the basis for what we're doing here today. And uh, we're really going to be honing in on uh, verse 31, which I know uh, most of us are really familiar with. But I figured it'd be helpful to read the first couple of verses uh, from 23 to 24. It says, All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. Uh, all things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. So if we jump down to verse 31, we see, Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of the Lord. And I know this is a scripture that all of us uh, have heard quoted tons of times. It's one that we ourselves have quoted a lot of times. Um, but what I find ironic is the way that we usually apply this to our daily lives. Um, I, I see it predominantly used in two ways, doing things to the glory of the Lord. Uh, one is to convey a sense of humility when someone will give us a compliment. So for instance, someone uh, could come up to me after church and say, man, like the, the song selection today just really spoke to me. Um, it really met me where I was at, to which I, I typically respond, oh, soli deo gloria, gloria uh, glory to God alone. Um, and while it's a true statement and it's an appropriate spot, uh, response, if we're not careful, uh, that sentiment can easily be turned into false humility because there's sometimes, I'll be honest, like all of us where I will glory in what someone's saying and, and I'll be like, oh man, that's awesome that they notice my giftedness and my talentedness. But then I try and church it up by going, oh, all glory to God which I think can be dangerous. So that's the first way is to convey a sense of humility when someone gives us a compliment. Not always a bad thing, um, but something we need to be careful of. The second way that we use doing things to the glory of the Lord comes with uh, to justify the actions our Christian liberty affords us. So I'll give you uh, another example. Uh, especially, this is especially true when we're talking to people that may be of um, more conservative uh, church backgrounds. Uh, so for instance, smoking cigars, right? Spurgeon said, oh, I intend to smoke a good cigar to the glory of the Lord tonight. Or someone will be like, man, I, I like to have a, a glass of beer or wine with my dinner to the glory of the Lord. Or I like to listen to secular music and I do it to the glory of the Lord. And so what you see here is we often speak of doing things to the glory of the Lord, but it's usually in one of these two ways. But how often do we actually let the thought of doing everything to the glory of the Lord invade um, our thought process, even in the most mundane things we do. Because I think that's what Paul is communicating here. As he says, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of the Lord. Um, how often do we actually think about what we're doing as we're eating and drinking? I know when I'm eating or drinking, I'm not usually like, oh, awesome, I'm doing this to the glory of the Lord. No, usually for me, it's like midnight, I'm hungry, I go to the kitchen and I'm looking for whatever I can devour with the least amount of effort. So I'm like, all right, bag of chips. <laughs> pop tarts. Uh, literally, I'm, I'm very lazy. Um, and so, like I said, we just usually don't think about doing things to the glory of the Lord um, when, it, when it comes to those kind of things. And Lord knows that my diet definitely does not reflect eating to the glory of the Lord. So this is definitely something that I need to grow in as well. Um, so as we transition to the topic we have at hand, um, one thing most of us do regularly is engage in social media. And if, if you don't, just bear with me for a moment and maybe I'll convince you that you should. Uh, so it's something that a lot of us do. Um, it's something that we spend a lot of time engaging in, but it's not something that we often think that we need to do to the glory of the Lord. But it's something that invades our space. So it's like I get up in the morning and the first thing I do as I turn off my alarm is I, to try and wake myself up, I'm like, oh, Facebook, Instagram. Then you start kind of scrolling through and seeing what people are saying. And then you, you get into the shower, you get dressed, you check your phone, you go to the bathroom. I think most of us, if we're honest, we're going to check our phone and see, and see what people are saying. Um, so yeah, it's something we engage in, but not something we always do to the glory of the Lord. So what I want to cover today is what it might look like for us to engage social media to the glory of the Lord. And I've got three primary things. Um, and what it really all comes down to is obedience to the second great command to love our neighbor as ourself. And I feel like it works its way down the funnel to be uh, three different things here. So the first one we'll see is uh, we can use social media to proclaim the liberating power of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what that looks like. Use social media to proclaim the liberating power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The second is we can use social media to speak into the cultural uh, issues surrounding us through an informed biblical worldview. I think the key part there is an informed biblical worldview. The third is we can use social media as a way to find ways to better love and serve our neighbor. So I'll go ahead and I'll jump into the first one here, using social media to proclaim the liberating power of the gospel. Through social media, we have 
the biggest mission field ever. Uh, we literally have people of every rage, uh, age, every race, and in every place engaging in Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, uh, literally from every continent. And so here's a, a few statistics I wanted to share that I thought might be helpful. Two billion people are using the internet daily of the 7.5 billion that are on earth. And the, over half of those just don't have access to internet, like they're unreached people groups, right? So 2 billion people are using the internet every day. In a single day, approximately 700,000 people join Facebook, like new people, not people logging into Facebook, 700,000 people on a daily basis join Facebook. And then in a single day, we've got another 3,000 people that join Twitter. Um, I didn't know Twitter was still a thing. I, I don't really use it. But any, either way, we see here that there's every day our mission field is being expanded by a million people a million new people that we can reach through social networking. So it's, it's humbling to me and it really begs the question of how are we conducting ourselves when we're online? How can we effectively maximize the use of social media for the advancement of, of the gospel? Um, here's just a few ways that I think that we can do this, how we can proclaim the liberating power of the gospel through social media. One is, man, is there a, a scripture that spoke to you today as you were, as you were reading your Bible? If there is, just hop online and share that. Another thing that we could do is if there is, a, man, if there's something that is in our time of study today that like it was just like an aha moment that was really powerful to us, share that. Uh, did you enjoy Sunday's sermon? Go ahead and share that. Is there a song that we sang on Sunday that you really enjoyed? Share that. Do you feel compelled to share your testimony with people? Go ahead and share that. I know a lot of times it seems like, I mean, this seems simple. Um, and I know there's a lot of times it seems like people aren't, really tuning in because you go, oh man, I only get two or three likes on my Facebook account. Um, but I'm going I'm to go into detail more uh, on that. So even though we don't realize that all those small deposits really add up for people, just a personal testimony for me is there was a girl that I went to high school with, never talked to her in high school. She was a couple grades below me. But she, after I graduated, she worked at a store that I would frequent in Owasso. And, uh, you know, we'd explain pleasantries, hey, how's it going? And that's about the extent of it. I didn't even know, um, just because I'm really bad at, uh, I guess, paying attention, but she was my friend on Facebook for a long time. And one day I get this random message from her, first message I'd ever received from her, and she's like, hey, it seems like you have like a, a spiritual walk that, that, that has a close proximity to God. How can I feel closer to God? And I was like, oh, wow, okay, uh, cool. So I told her the three things I would tell everybody. The one thing would be, be in the Bible, be praying on a daily basis if you want to feel closest to God. The second thing I tell her is get plugged in at a local church where you can serve, where you can give, where you can grow. And then the third thing I said was be reading books by good Christian authors. So she's like, oh, cool. What books do you recommend? And I was like, all right, let's back up a little bit. Do you, ha do you have a Bible? No. Okay, we'll start there. And then I was like, do you have a church? She said, no, I don't have one of those either. So I ended up getting her Bible, getting her book that laid out the gospel. And she actually came and visited One Life a couple of times before finding a church home over in Owasso. But she still keeps up with stuff on our, uh, on our mobile app. But that's literally somebody just through, you know, sharing scripture, sharing things that are encouraging me, felt the need to kind of reach out and just try and see, man, how can I, how can I grow in my spiritual walk? She wasn't a believer and now she is like literally just from social media and from seeing that and from get going out on a limb. Because I guarantee you, if I saw her in person, she probably wouldn't have been like, hey, how do you feel close to God? Because that's not something a lot of like, right? We don't talk about politics. We don't talk about religion. But through that medium of social networking, she felt comfortable enough to reach out to me. So openly and often sharing the truth of God's word through social media is an open door. And I guess just also worth mentioning, if you're an introverted person who's just not comfortable like talking to people in general, it's a great way to grow in that. That's where I was at. I used to be like a keyboard warrior on Facebook, but then I was super timid in person. Um, and God's been working that out. So it's just a few ideas of how we can speak the word of God, engage in social media, sharing scripture, sharing what God's been teaching us, sharing our testimony, sharing uh, a sermon that's spoken to us lately and, and, and sharing maybe some songs from Sunday. That's the first one. Second one is to use social media to speak into cultural issues through an informed biblical worldview. There's a lot of garbage and noise on, on Facebook, right? On, on Instagram, all these various outlets. And typically it's presided or it's presented with just two sides. You've got, and it doesn't matter if it's anything from abortion to 
politics to whether to stand or to not stand for the national anthem. There's always the conservative side and there's always the liberal side. And there's not much of anything in between. You got these two polarizing things. But the, the reality is, is right in the middle is where we find biblical faithfulness and in being filled with grace and truth. The truth and faithfulness to God's word is always in the middle and it's filled with both grace and truth. I think a good example is just to take like what our church has been doing with One Life for Life. Because on the conservative side of things, you, you go, well, man, you, if you want to end abortion, just vote conservative. Uh, we vote conservative. We got to pass these laws, right? So we write these laws that go, hey, we'll s- no abortions uh, after 12 weeks. So once it starts looking like a baby, it's not okay. But before then, I guess it is. And so we see it being communicated in that way. We go, oh, you know, politicians will be like, oh, I'm all against abortion, except for the case of rape. So let's make a, a law about that too. So as a result, we've got all these laws being passed. So we're at the federal level, they were like, okay, abortion's now legal. We'd still have a total mess in each one of our states because we've got all these laws in the books that are saying, oh, it's okay up to 12 weeks or it's okay in the case of rape. And so we'd have a bunch of undoing. And then on the flip side, you've got the liberal side that's going, well, you, you crazy people, you just, uh, you don't care for the moms. You, what are you gonna do when the child is born? To which I would respond, man, look at what our team is doing uh, in One Life for Life to love on moms. Really, I've seen a few things. I've seen, uh, you know, James, Justin, Nick, I've seen these guys holding the fathers accountable to their actions and calling them not to murder their children. On the flip side, we've seen the, uh, them and we've seen their wives engaging the moms. Like we just had a baby shower here two weeks ago. And that like, from what I've heard, that lady got hooked up like more so than anybody else. And so it's like, man, so once again, we see faithfulness and, and truth as we speak into these issues is not by passing laws and it's not by just turning a blind eye and being like, well, you know, yeah, you're the right, I can't help. It's like, no, we can totally help. And so we see, that's just one example, that faithfulness when we speak into cultural issues through social media is in the middle. So um, speaking into cultural issues through an informed biblical worldview is just another way we can engage social media to the glory of the Lord. But it's also worth a warning to brace yourselves because as you do that, conservatives are probably going to start labeling you as liberals and liberals are probably just going to not know what to do with you. But I think it's a pretty good place to be because honestly, more often than not, like there's a lot of people that will hear you out on your perspective just because it's something different, something that's cutting through the noise. So uh, the second way we can use social media is to speak into cultural issues through an informed biblical worldview. All right. The third way I think that we can use it is to uh, find ways to better love and to serve our neighbor. For better, for worse, there's a lot of people that post everything out on Facebook. I know I've got those friends on Facebook. You've got those friends. You know, I think at one time I probably was one of those friends. It's like, today sucks, you know, and just like throwing it out to the world, not remembering that everybody's going to see what I'm actually saying. Um, So for better, for worse, we we really have an insight through social media and what's going on in people's life. In my newsfeed just this week, I saw a single mom Who's, who her mom was battling cancer in the hospital. And she's just talking about like, man, I just, I can't carry all this weight. I don't know how I can do this on my own with my mom, with my kids. I saw another guy who t- was like, posted a picture, super excited. Like him and his fiance just bought a house together and they had moved in together. And then five days later, I see him posting, well, she dumped me and now I have no place to live. And yada, yada. and like, there's just like a whole rant on here. <laughs> And then at the same time, then I'll see somebody who posted about like, man, my car broke down on the side of the road. Anybody want to come help? <laughs> and so, man, the, I think the best thing we can do is to reach out to them in a personal message. Like we can really find easy ways to tangible ways to love and to serve those people just by, but just by reaching out and being a voice of reason. Because a lot of times, um, especially in like that second case with that guy, you know, people are going to just be like, yeah, man, screw her, screw that. You know, it's like, there's just like, so it gives you an opportunity to actually speak into it and, and to, to breathe encouragement into that. So some people put it all out there. We'd be foolish not to capitalize on that to the glory of the Lord. And after all, Jesus did say, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So we, we have the only message uh, that has the power to put someone at peace with God. Like that's huge. That's our first and foremost concern. But we also have the only message that can believe, or breathe hope into the worst circumstances that somebody is gonna face. So we can use social media to the glory of the Lord by being vigilant and looking for ways to better love and serve our neighbors. So with that, I also wanna go through four warnings when using social media to, to kind of round us off here. Number one, as I already mentioned, is to remember that 
everyone is watching. I know it doesn't feel like it. Like I said, a lot of times our posts will just get a few likes on them, even though we have like 500 friends or something. Um, but everyone sees what we're posting. Um, like that girl who had, who'd reached out and was like, hey, how do I feel close to God? I don't, like I said, I didn't know if she was dead or alive out there. Like I didn't, I'd never gotten like a, a like, a comment, anything. I didn't even realize I was a friend with her on Facebook at that point. But yet she was still seeing and she was watching these things and felt comfortable to the point of, of reaching out. Another thing was, uh, I remember, this was a couple summers ago, I ran to uh, an older gentleman I used to go to church with at the gas station, hadn't probably seen him in 10 years. And he's like, hey, how'd you shoot today? And I was like, what? He's like, oh, you're out you're playing golf with your dad today. And I was like, oh, I, I, I didn't see you there. He's like, no, 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 no. You posted it on Facebook, remember? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, man, I, like, once again, I was like, I, I didn't even know that we were friends on Facebook, let alone, maybe we weren't. I don't know. I still don't know to this day. But either way, this person saw what I was posting. So even though I, I didn't realize it, nonetheless, they're watching it. So we need to remember that everyone's watching and everything that we post is communicating a message about Christ uh, in one way or the, or the other. So we need to think twice there. 30 over par. Yeah, 30 over par. That's probably, uh, that's probably right where I'm at usually. I go out and I play twice a year. And then if it's good, I keep playing. And if it's not, I, I just give it up for the year. Um, the second is to be discerning uh, and be aware of the ramifications before we post. Because obviously, when we speak into, like I said, speak into these cultural issues with a, uh, an informed biblical worldview, it's, it's controversial, um, but it's what scripture has called us to do. So before saying something like, abortion is murder, or before posting, Catholicism is the gospel and nothing else, we really need to kind of check that and, and, and be aware of the ramifications before posting so that way we're not caught off guard when someone's like, hey, you're an idiot, and then we lash out in the flesh. So we really need to um, be aware of those ramifications before we post. The third thing is to respond wisely and Christ-like when someone uh, questions you or opposes you. Uh, when we're sharing the truth of God's word and we address cultural issues through the lens of a biblical worldview, people will surely have questions for us. And so just, uh, and this is, this is very pragmatic. This isn't like gospel by any means, but like my general rule is if someone posts something and, and asks a question and it seems sincere about it, I'll comment and I'll say, hey, I'm gonna message you in a private, or I'm gonna reach out to you in a private message because I don't think that having that dialogue on the public forum in the comment section is the best place to have that happen. I know with Matthew, right? Like we, me and Matthew talked about something last week. Him and his wife had a question about something I posted on Facebook and said, hey, I'll talk to you guys about it. I'll message you. And so I messaged them. And sure enough, it's like we ended up in the pretty much the same place or at least better understanding one another. But if I would have had that in the comment section on Facebook, there would have been lots of other people to chime in and be like, you're an idiot or you're an idiot. And it's just like, it's not that productive. So that's my first principle for, for responding wisely um, another best practice, I think, is that if someone does like come out and openly opposes you in front of everybody, I do think it's worth uh, to address that. Just so that way it's not like, oh, this Christian guy doesn't have any answers. Look at people asking him questions. And he doesn't have any answers to it. Um, but before responding, my encouragement is always to pray first and then to really think through like, man, how can I respond in a way that's both filled with grace and with truth? And my general rule when it comes to that kind of thing is it's a one and done like, I'm going to give you one comment. And I'm going to try and be filled with grace and truth. But after that, like, I'm not going to get in a Facebook war because at the end of the day, we need to stop being keyboard warriors. And this is coming from somebody who is a reforming and, 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 and rehabilitating keyboard warrior, right? Because a lot of times, like I said, we'll, we'll end up getting angry and we'll, we'll lash out in the flesh. And so we'll, we'll harm our witness, firstly, and then it's also, so if we're viewing it through the lens of doing it to the glory of God, it's not going to be stewarding our time well, which is not going to glorify God. I've got good friends and I've been guilty of it too, where it's like, man, you're just getting like these super long comments. Like someone's typing like five paragraphs. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get them back with eight. So I sound smarter. And it's like, we, you know, we go on and, and, and it's just totally distracting from the part of our day. And I think the last thing and also the most detrimental is it cannot be serving your family well if you're over here on Facebook, just having these wars with these people, and it's like, no, we need to be doing this to the glory of the Lord. So once again, respond wisely in Christ, like when someone questions and opposes you. And then this is the last one uh, for warnings. And I think this is one of the most important ones I've seen uh, is to check your sources before you share something. There's uh, a lot of fake news articles out there and uh, sharing news articles from an uncredited source is always a bad idea. Um, because 99% of the time they're untruthful. And this is actually what the Bible would call bearing false witness. So we're actually in sin 
by sharing these articles from uncredited sources. And I think we can all agree that we have enough fake news coming from like legitimate news sites. So I'm sure if you search hard enough, you can find something that is in line with whatever you want to say. But nonetheless, uh, this is huge and it can be a detrimental uh, thing to our witness when we share these articles. Um, we're all guilty of it. We see something that catches our eye and we go, I'm gonna share that. So always check sources. So just to, to, to kind of recap everything, the ways that we can engage in social media to the glory of the Lord is by using social media to proclaim the liberating power of the gospel, to use it to speak into the cultural issues through an informed biblical worldview, to look for ways to love and to serve our neighbors. And then as our general warnings, uh, remember everyone's watching, remember to respond wisely, to be discerning in our responses and to check our sources. So I hope that was helpful. Um, like I said, it's something that we all do on a pretty regular basis. So if we can just filter that through the lens of every time I get on here, I'm gonna be doing this to the glory of the Lord.